Um, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to this uh, Geo session uh, on Friday uh, morning. I'm Christina, and uh, we, together with Olami Posi, we're uh, going to chair this uh, session. We have uh, six speakers um, covering all sorts of um, topics from agriculture, food security, uh, disaster risk management, and also uh, indigenous communities. Um, we are looking forward to all their presentations, um, and I'm going to let Olami Posi to introduce our uh, first speaker, Dr. Tian Yao. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Olami Posi. Um, Christina has introduced me. Um, myself and I will be co-hosting this uh, event today. So currently, we have um, our first speaker, Dr. Tian Yao. Dr. Tian Yao holds a PhD in geography from Boston University. A doctorate research developed the methods to model forest vegetation dynamics using remote sensing data. She joined NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in 2013. She's a research scientist and joined NASA Disasters Program in 2018 as the ASP Lands Coordinator. Dr. Yao is leading the work to provide user-friendly NASA lands near real-time remote sensing and GIS data products for stakeholders with NASA disaster program and other programs in NASA Earth Science Applied Science Program, ESP. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Olami Posi. Um, Dr. Yao, you can start. I'm going to share your screen now, and we are going mm -hmm. to remove ourselves so you can uh, start your presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, did you know that all data produced by NASA are available fully and openly to data users? My name is Tian Yao from NASA Earth Applied Science Disaster Program. My co-authors include Dr. David Green, Carrie Michael, and Diane Davis. Today, I would like to share with you how to use NASA Lens near real-time products for disaster risk reduction. First, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues from NASA Disaster Program, LANS, Black Marble Team, Goddard Flood Mapping Team, NASA Worldview and Gibbs, and many other partners for their efforts and contributions to this work. My talk is divided into three parts. First, I would like to introduce a little bit about NASA LANS and NASA Applied Science Disaster Program. And then I will introduce our work in disaster applications. I will start by defining data latency. For satellite data, latency refers to how long it takes from satellite observations to the end users. NASA and other agencies using different terms for latencies. Back in 2016, in a workshop at NASA, the terms of latencies were defined and agreed by participants for all data managed by NASA Earth Science Division. In this table, you can see details of these terms. So for the term of near real time, it refers to the latency from one to three hours, while the term of low latency refers to three to 24 hours. The near real time and low latency data products are made available more quickly than standard processing, which would meet users' needs especially in disaster applications. As far as I know, 
the European Space Agency uses the same definition for near real time, which offers two data product delivered less than three hours after satellite observation. If you are interested in the definition of data latency, please go to the link in the slide. Lens refers to NASA's land, atmosphere, near real time capability for Earth observation systems. The goal of Lens is to provide near real time data products within three hours from satellite observations to meet the timely needs of users. To visualize Lens near real time images available within three to five hours, after observations, you can see the data in NASA GIFs and World View. Uh, so, uh, so far, Lens provides near real time data and imagery from 10 instruments, including more than 110 near real time data products. During the past 11 years, Lens continues to have new products. Right now, the Lens team is working with SMAP satellite team, and we expect the near real time soil moisture products are coming soon. So my co-authors, Karen Michael is the Lens manager, and Diane Davis is the Lens operational manager. So also lens in the managed by NASA Earth Science Data and Information System, a user working group is responsible for providing guidance and recommendations to lens. Um, the user working group represents a broad needs of lens application community. The user uh, the user working group meets twice a year. Uh, during the meeting, they share the updates from each lens elements, uh, share the feedback from users, as well as review the new proposals for new capability in lens to ensure lens capability meet the needs for the near real time community. Now, the user working group is chaired by Dr. Miguel Roman from Earth from Space Institute in USRA. Recommendations from user working group are made to ESDIS and will go to NASA headquarters for the feasibility and also funding support. The right table just gave you a general idea about who are the Lens user WG members and uh, uh, their affiliations. So this um, so Lens data products are routinely used by data users who access data for their own purchase, but also uh, used by brokers who add values to the data by comparing it with their specialist knowledge and uh, serve it to targeted uh, end users. This slide is provided by Dan Davis, can give you a general idea about who are the users of Lens. NASA Disaster Program is one of the primary users of Lens. As I mentioned in the beginning of the talk, all NASA data products are open and free to data users. Lens near real time data are made available through the Earth Data website and have been archived and visualized in NASA Disaster Mapping Portal, NASA Forms, NASA GIFs, and WorldView. If you're a scientist and you would like to use Lens data to do research in HDF format, please go to Earth Data to browse and download data 
All you need to do is to register in this website. If you prefer JS platform, please go to NASA Forms, Worldview, and NASA Disaster Mapping Portal. In the next few slides, I will introduce some of the data tools. The fire information for resource management system called Forms is a part of LANS. Forms was developed in 2007 by the University of Maryland with funding from NASA Applied Science Program and also UNFAO. And it was transitioned into LANS in 2012. Users can download near real-time active fire products from Modis and Veers within seven days in different data format. Recently, in partnership with the U.S. Forest Service, a Forms U.S. Canada map service was launched in January 2021. The Forms U.S. Canada provides enhanced capability for visualization and access of near real-time satellite active fire products, as well as relevant remote sensing data products for the United and Canada. The work is ongoing and additional capabilities will continue to be added to Forms US Canada. In the next section, I will introduce NASA Disaster Program. First, I would like to show you how we shared an added value to land near real-time products with users in disaster community. NASA Disaster Program developed an open data portal called NASA Disaster Mapping Portal, which has the ArcGIS interface for viewing, analyzing, and downloading disaster response data set, including lens near real-time products on disaster events. NASA Disaster Program is led by David Green. This program was activated 261 times since uh, 2017. So following a disaster event, the NASA headquarters evaluate to de determine the degree of response. The program uses a tiered approach to determine the level of resources dedicated for each activation. In the table on this slide, you can see details of the activation tier structure. When activated, disaster coordinators at each NASA center will help provide information and data product requested by partners and stakeholders. In most cases, we use global remote sensing and modeling results to provide authorized local information. The next part I will share with you is how we use LANS near real-time product to support disasters. Visit data latency within three hours from satellite observation, LANS products have been used for disaster risk reduction activities before, during, and after disaster, including volcano eruptions, wildfires, floods, landslides, hurricanes, earthquakes, and many more. For each activated disaster event, NASA Disaster Program provides rapid assessment of damage for potential impacted areas. Here is an example of NASA response timeline for tropical cyclone Edai in Africa. In response to the request from stakeholders, including IFRC and the US Department of State, NASA Disaster Program provided flood mapping products, landslide products, GPM precipitation products, black marble nighttime light products in both high definition and, star and standard products. 
SMAP soil moisture uh, products, and many more. These data products have been used for decision makers to identify regions where people have been suffered from the disasters. And we receive very good uh, feedback from users. The other uh, example is using lens near real time data products for volcano eruption. Knowledge of the geographic location and direction of lava flows provide critical information for disaster prediction as well as prevention. As you may be aware, yesterday, the Kilovi volcano in Hawaii Big Island erupted again. It, uh, there was not a severe impact at this time, but back in 2018, it was a very significant event. In NASA disaster mapping portal, you could check the volcano activities over the last 24 hours with land spheres near real time fire products. We received the feedback from users indicated that lands near real time products were able to detect the first sign of volcano eruption, which was very critical for decision making. Floods are the most common natural disaster in worldwide. The Goddard Modis global flood mapping products have been used to monitor the land cover and land use change over time in disaster impacted areas. This product is an experimental product which has been transitioned into lens this April. Here are the links to flood mapping T as well as uh, the near real time products in lens. The other user favorite product is NASA's black marble nighttime light product suite. By using the black marble nighttime light products, users can use a pre and post disaster map to access extent of, manage, uh, of damage and to make decisions for activities in reconstruction and recovery in infrastructure. Earlier this year, the black marble night, nighttime light, blue yellow composite products is available in NASA disaster mapping portal and NASA worldview. This product, this product improves user's ability to determine if the change in light are due to the power outage or just uh, due to dense cloud cover. So next is an, is an example of using lens forms active fire product to support Western US fire in 2020. In, 2020. in disaster mapping portal, the JS user-friendly data format allows you to combine data from different sources together in one platform for decision making. The map on the left side shows the aerosol optical depths over California, where the locations of active fires have been ad identified by Landsforms products. The image on the right side shows Landsforms fire products provided the origin of smoke in three dimension. The last example is for uh, is also for volcano eruption in disaster mapping portal, OMPS aerosol and SO2 products earlier uh, clearly show how the plume was transported in different levels of the atmosphere during the uh, eruptive period. In the end, um, I would like to introduce a few upcoming NASA missions, which will increase our capability 
to cover the gaps in disaster risk reduction between scientific capability and users' needs. The first one is NISAR, which plan to be launched in 2023. So in my work for disaster responses, especially for hurricanes, floods, and earthquakes, the heavy cloud is always an issue for optical remote sensing data. The new mission, NISAR, will provide low latency, high resolution SAR observations, which can penetrate cloud cover to support disaster response. The, the other mission, Tropics, will provide near real time high resolution sounding within hurricane eyes. The satellite has been launched on June 30, 2021, as a pathfinder. It's a tester. And the first light images have been released. If you're interested in Tropics mission, you can go to the link for more detailed information. The last mission I want to introduce called the PACE, which is expected to be launched in 2024. It will provide low latency data products to detect and map disasters, including oil spills, uh, wildfire, and many more. So again, with the free and open data policy, we look forward for the upcoming NASA missions for disaster risk reduction. So that's my talk today. Uh, I want to thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, you can ask, or you please feel free to email me. Here is my email uh, address. I want to thank again for my co-authors, Dr. David Green, Karen Michael, and Diane Davis. And if you're interested in NASA disaster program and NASA lens, please go to the website to check for more information. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yao. Uh, that was a very interesting presentation about uh, what NASA does uh, in terms of um, disaster management uh, data sets. Um, if anybody wants to ask any questions, please use the questions tab. Uh, so far, um, we didn't receive any question, but there is a small lag um, on the presentation. So uh, we're going to wait for about five minutes uh, to the next one. And in this time, it's uh, our Q&A session. So please, uh, if you have any questions for Dr. Yao, um, uh, put them in the chat uh, where, the, uh, where we can have a lively discussion. Um, if there are no questions right now, um, or we actually um, heard some uh, information about each speaker's um, contact details. Um, maybe it's uh, appropriate for um, whoever has questions and is uh, probably shy to ask them in the chat <laughs> to, to contact you directly and um, uh, have uh, more information about this data set. Um, Thank you so much, Dr. Yao. And uh, we're going to, oh, uh, we, we got a question. <laughs> oh. um, are there any plans for real time, um, near real time analysis for a possibility of detecting fires? Uh, uh, are you talking about to forecasting wildfires or? Yes. Um, so right now in NASA disaster program, as far as I know, there is a funding the ROSES proposal. The, that team 
is working on uh, uh, on on models based on uh, optical remote sensing data uh, from ghost and various models. So I expect they gonna to have some new uh, data products uh, very soon. But right now, um, uh, for the plan, so I just want to say there are ongoing projects and we expect to have the uh, fire products uh, in the next few years. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we're going to wait a little bit more uh, for <laughs> maybe <laughs> sure. the questions are uh, mm -hmm. going to pop up. Uh, mm -hmm. If not, anyway, we uh, are trying to respect the times for each speaker. So um, we're not going to uh, go into the next presentation unless um, it's the right time for the presentation. Um, I don't see any more questions, but uh, anyway, we can have um, about one minute of a break. And uh, if in the meantime, anybody wants to um, know more about these data sets, um, it, uh, they can contact uh, Dr. Yao on, uh, on the, um, uh, um, the contact that is available on the screen. 